Yeah, so we've been uh, for the last three days, this is the fourth consecutive day. <clears throat> we'll be, we've been uh, speaking about Lord Chaitanya in his um, mood as a Supreme Personality of Godhead in one of his rare exhibitions of his actual identity as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And so uh, we will uh, continue the narration. We find how um, the Lord has been showing his mercy to different devotees. After first he received uh, honor, worship, praise, glorification. Devotees were singing the um, the Arti song, Kibajayo, the Gaurarti song, they were singing the bathing song, which is the Brahma Samhita prayers. They were uh, offering immense, upon, immense quality of all kinds of boga to the Lord. And the Lord was consuming everything right in front of their eyes, whatever was brought, including unlimited gallons of Ganga water. Uh, after the worship was done, the Lord turned his attention to the devotees and was thinking about them. And he was picking, he pointed out certain personalities and he described some pastimes that they had performed where they didn't know his relationship, their relationship with uh, him. And so um to show his love for his devotees he was glorifying his devotees now that was haridas dakor morari gupta sridhar and gangadas uh ganga narayan but the charger so many that was his teacher in school and now he turns his attention to Lord Advaita Acharya. He says, the Lord is smiling. He looks towards Advaita, Advaita and he begins to reveal his inner mood. Listen, Acharya. Do you remember? One night I fed you. At that time, I had not advented but you are endeavoring excessively to bring me down from my spiritual abode. You would hold discourses on Bhagavad Gita and you cannot understand the meaning of one particular text which pertain to devotional service. You did not look for the discrepancy in the text, but you gave up comfort and enjoyment, wishing to acquire the knowledge that was needed to understand. You were very depressed and you refused to, to eat. You were fasting and I could see you were undergoing much difficulty. I cannot see my devotees experience so much pain. So I came to you in a dream and spoke. And I said, awake, awake, Acharya, the real purport of the Gita text is unequivocal. Please get up and eat, give up your fast, and I will soon reveal to you the meaning of this verse. And then you encourage, I encourage you to eat, and soon I will clarify the doubt. And then he gave an, an exact number and precise dates of the dreams and the correct text that had to be explained. And the Lord continued, I will explain all the difficult texts with the exception of one. And that one I will now explain to you. He said, I have already explained these difficult texts. Now the one I will explain to you is from the Bhagavad Gita. This is in the 13th chapter. Sarvata panipadam tam. 
Sarvato Shikshara Mukam, which means the Supreme Being has hands and feet are everywhere. This is wrongly interpreted by different schools of philosophical thought. The Supreme Personality pervades everything in his all-powerful presence. Sarvata Padipadam Tat, Sarvato Shikshiro Mukam, Sarvatam Shruti Maloke, Sarvam Avritta Tishtati. Everywhere are his hands and legs, his eyes and faces, and he has ears everywhere. In this way, the super cells exist, pervading everything. I have just revealed to you the very confidential meaning of this verse. Who else other than you can rightly comprehend this subject matter? When Ajaitacharya heard this explanation, which was very dear to him, he was overcome with happiness and began to cry. He addressed the Lord saying, I am unable to say anything. Ajaitacharya was merged in ecstatic bliss, seeing the wonderful potency of the Lord. One who has no faith in these spiritual explanations and exchanges is doomed. Only rare souls can understand the dissertations of Dvaitacharya, who was personally taught by Lord Chaitanya. The instructions of the Vedas are interpreted in various ways, but only those who, who have been enlightened by transcendental knowledge coming from the Lord himself can understand. Because these words are as good as the Supreme Lord. These words are like autumn clouds. They rain in certain areas and leave other places dry. These words are understood only by a few fortunate souls. Our Advaita Charya should not be blamed which be, he bestows the highest happiness on everyone and good fortune. It depends on their piety and good fortune. Advaitacharya's main duty was to serve Lord Chaitanya. Those who accept Lord Chaitanya as the Supreme Lord of all lords are the true followers of Advaitacharya. Great uh, devotional service is easily understandable, but for not for those who have no faith. Those who live simply for the body, they cannot accept Lord Chaitanya as the Lord and Master of everyone, including the position of Advaita Charya. Ravana was a great devotee of Lord Shiva. He did not support except the supremacy of Lord Ramachandra, who was even the Lord of Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva was displeased with Ravana. Despite his devotion to Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva was very displeased. Hence, because he never accepted the Lord and lost the mercy of his spiritual master, Lord Shiva, his entire race was destroyed. The followers of Advaita Charya, not understanding the desire of Advaita, claim to be his disciples, but criticize Lord Chaitanya. Advaita Charya does not tell them anything because of his particular nature, therefore neglecting the advice of other Vaishnavas and the inner desire of Advaita Charya, they simply perish. They don't understand the exalted position of Advaita Chari and his mystic perfection, which is all due to Lord Chaitanya. Little do they know that the, we're speaking of the followers of Advaita Chari. Little do they know of the Lord Chaitanya's external potency, Maya Devi. It's extremely powerful. 
and she takes efficient care of such wayward and dem dem demoniac personalities. Lord Chaitanya is the beautiful supreme personality of Godhead. And the Dwaita Charya is his eternal servant. The point that is being made is that people follow Advaita Charya, but they don't accept Lord Chaitanya. Therefore, they are also condemned by Advaita Charya and do not, and then they perish due to the power of Maya. A person's elevation and progress in devotional service depends on how much they are surrendered to Lord Chaitanya. When one, in proportion to the mercy one receives from Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, to that degree they advance in devotional service. Lord Nityananda employs everyone. Bai, bai, call out Goranga Chandra, Gor Chandra, Gor Chandra, call out Bai, bai. Bai means brothers. Advaita Charya, after hearing the words of Lord Chaitanya, he was moved to emotional ecstasies. One who understands that Advaita Charya is a foremost Vaishnav devotee of Lord Chaitanya, and one who serves Advaita Charya in that capacity is an exalted personality. He is guaranteed to get the shelter of uh, Lord Krishna, because we we understand from history that Lord Advaita Charya had six sons. Uh, three of them became Vaishnavas, and three of them became uh, monists, impersonalists, and simply didn't accept Lord Chaitanya at all, and therefore they were rejected. They were called Asara. Sara means helpful, useful. They were us, Sara, they were useless. Uh, so it's interesting, even though Advaita Charya is Mahavishnu and the mood in the mood of Lord Shiva, still he had sons, and th three of them, Krishna Das, Achyutananda, and Gopal, were great devotees, but Balaram and Jagadish and I forgot the last name, these last two and one more, they considered Advaita Charya to be exalted and Lord Chaitanya not to be. And they, they took to the path of monism and ultimately they were rejected. Lord Chaitanya lifting up his arms, he said, everyone look at me. And ask, ask any boon your desire. All the devotees bubbled over with happiness hearing the words. And they each asked a boon from the Lord. Dvaitacharya spoke first. My Lord, I only pray that you shower your grace on the ignorant and fallen souls. Someone else said, my father opposes my devotional involvement. Sounds familiar. So grant me this, O Lord, may his heart be transformed and may he become your devotee. Another one prayed, Lord, please increase my faith in my spiritual master. In this way, they asked for blessings for their dear ones, disciples, sons, wives, servants, and so on. It was interesting to note Anyone who requested a blessing never asked anything from themselves, only for the benefit of others. Or if they did, they asked their own, for their own devotional service to be enhanced. Smiling sweetly after hearing everyone's wishes, the Lord granted everybody's moon. So the Lord can do anything. So if he's pleased, he can immediately bestow his benediction in any way he wants. 
He can give you pure love of God right on the spot if he wants. Mukunda, he was there. He was behind the curtains in another room, watching everything. And Mukunda knew all the devotees intimately and, lo and was loved by all. However, no one could understand why the Lord was apparently neglecting Mukunda because whenever he sang, the Lord was eager to hear. The Lord did not call him inside, nor did he come. The devotees felt concerned for Mukunda. Shiva said, Oh Lord, what offense has Mukunda committed? He's favored by you and dear to all of us. Whose heart can stop from melting upon hearing Mukunda's songs? He's always full of respect for you and no one can find any fault in him. You have rejected, rejected him. Has he committed some mistake? Why do you disown and push him away? Is he your own very servant? He is your own very servant. And then Shiva said, he will not come unless you call him. The Lord changed his mood. He said, never speak like that to me. Do not plead to me on that wretched person's behalf. The descriptions you have heard about pretenders who make a show of humility, but the next moment are aggressive, are in fact the correct assessment of Makunda. None of you really know him in truth. Mukunda sometimes is a very perfect figure of humility, approaching me, holding a straw in his teeth. However, the next moment he comes to strike me with a rod of iron. I cannot bear to see that pretentious wretch. Speaking eloquently in Mukunda's favor, Sriva said, who can understand the inconceivable workings of your energy? We never noticed anything offensive in Mukunda's character. Surely the shelter of your lotus feet is witness to his innocence. Lord Chaitanya continued, that spineless wretch will ver vociferously agree to all philosophical views to suit whatever company he is in. When he reads the Yoga Vashishta with Advaita Chari, he favors the impersonal Mayavadi philosophy. In the company of Vaishnavas, he pretends to be a Vaishnava, singing and dancing with perfect humility. Again, when he goes and joins the members of another Sampradaya, he rejects devotion of service and flays the process of bhakti with aggressive criticism. One who claims that there is some process higher than devotional service factually strikes me with an iron rod. He commits a serious offense to the, on the path of devotional service. I cannot bear to see his face. Mukunda heard everything as he was standing outside. Knowing now he would not be able to see the Lord. Mukunda did not accept the process, and Lord Chaitanya, through his inconfused potency, knew this. Mukunda, a pure devotee of the Lord, contemplated, there is no reason to remain alive any longer. I shall finish off this sinful body of mine. I do not know how long I can go on. Mukunda then spoke up aloud, hear me, Srivas, tell me, will I ever see the Lord again? And then he immediately broke down and cried. Mukunda's condition touched the hearts of the Vaishnavas. Then the Lord said, let him go through another 10 million births and then he can see me. When Mukunda heard this from the Lord's mouth, he was overtaken by tre tremendous joy and stood there drenched in tears, repeating, I will get, I will get. Mukunda, the Lord's servitor, danced like a madman in ecstatic love for Krishna. The Lord's assurance that he would see him again made him dance in ecstasy. When Lord Chaitanya saw Mukunda dancing, he laughed and ordered, bring him immediately. <laughs> the 
Vaishnava devotees eagerly informed Mukunda to come quickly to the Lord's presence. But the Lord, but Mukunda did not hear anything. He was completely submerged in ecstasy. Lord Chaitanya said, Oh Mukunda, your offenses are condoned. Come, see me and receive my blessings. The devotees went and brought Mukunda to the Lord. He fell down front in front of the Lord. The Lord spoke up, get up, get up, my dear Mukunda. All of your offenses have been exonerated. Your loss, you lose your wealth of devotion by wrong association. But now again, by loving a devotion, you have conquered and indebted me. When I said that you will see me after 10 million births, your desire to see me had been, you had full faith in the, in the infallibility of my words. And thus immediately you pushed away all previous doubts and offenses. You are bound eternally in your heart with the bonds of loving devotion. You are, my, you are my singer and you shall remain with me. And all this time I have been cutting jokes with you because of our intimacy. If perchance you really commit millions of offenses, then I do not consider them offenses because you are eternally my dearly beloved associate. Your body is 100% imbued with loving devotion to me. I perpetually reside upon you your tongue has spiritual sound. When Mukunda heard that, he was moved to tears. He felt apathy towards himself, condemning himself. He said, I'm so degraded, I know nothing about devotional. How can a fool like me experience the bliss of devotion? Duryodhana could easily see your universal form where scholars study throughout the scriptures just to have a glimpse of that same form. Yet, Doyadon and his entire family were stamped out, undergoing extreme pain because he lacked the slightest devotion to you. Yet, without possessing the proper devotional attitude, how can I experience bliss if I see you, my Lord? On, my, on the request of Rukmini Devi, you want to rescue her from the from the overprotection of the many powerful kings, and you mounted Garuda. Your devotees, like Lord Brahma, meditate on you with great desire. And you were, and as you were kidnapping Rukmini Devi, the kings tried to stop you and put up a fight. When you appeared as Raha, the board, you picked up the earth between your tusks. The demon Haranyakashipu saw. The demigods prayed for your wonderful form. You killed Haranyaksha because he was a demon and had no love and devotion to you. And Mukunda goes on to this glorify uh, Glorify him as he came in Lord Nishringadev to kill the wasp Harani Kashipu. And then Mukunda says, I have no devotional feelings, yet strangely I'm still alive. My head does not roll down due to grievous sins. And he continues, he glorifies the Lord at Mathura, how he gave his mercy to Kubja, Sudama, the garland maker. Now the same comes of Mathura was killed by you. Although he saw you, he was still, he couldn't recognize you. So this is, goes on and on glorifying the Lord. Mukunda is just giving his heart. And then he says, I am worse than an insect. I have no devotion. Mukunda began to weep and raise his arms. He trembled, sighing feelings of ecstatic love. 
Lord, the Lord himself was moved by his devotee's anguish. And he says, Mukunda, your devotional service is very dear to me. Whenever and wherever you sing, I will, I will be present there. One cannot understand me as I am just by seeing me. Only One can only realize my true self through the eyes of loving devotion. And then the Lord continues to glorify Mukunda. And he goes on to say, the demon Kamsa's washerman, King Kamsa's washerman saw me. I asked for help, but he refused. He had no attraction for me. I do not show mercy to non-devotees, even if they see me, they are deprived of transcendental results, real happiness. If one commits offenses, they lose, they, their devotional service becomes lost. And then he goes on, as the Lord shower his blessings upon Makunda, the Vaishnava's assembly resounded with great jubilation. The devotees always feel happy when they they see one of their associates receive the mercy of the Lord. Glory to Lord Jagannath, glory to the Lord. Whoever hears these narrations about Makunda receiving the special mercy is to become an associate of Makunda as a singer. Hmm. So as it continued, the devotees kept asking the Lord appeared to him, to different devotees in different incarnations, just to please them accordingly. And then there's one more pastime, I believe, in this particular. And this was about Sri. This was about. Uh, Sachimata, I believe. I'll tell that pastime in a minute. I have to take a break for a second and I'll be right back. Okay, we'll stop here and see if there's any comments or questions and I'll tell this other story at another day because we are running a little behind here. So we heard about and uh, Dwight Acharya today. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Sri Prabhupada and our glory is to you. <coughs> For me, it was very, very inspiring to, to hear about uh, uh, Mukunda's uh, story and and uh, it's amazing how selfless uh, uh, he, he was. And, and, uh, but I also noted that uh, it's, it's uh, such extra, extraordinary patience uh, uh, what uh, he, he showed to us. And, uh, and in, in this modern world, it's uh, so difficult to be patient because uh, everything we get uh, instantly. And could you uh, <clears throat> speak about how how it's possible to 
to practice to be more patient because I I really lack this uh, this quality and I I feel this uh, this is so important. It's interesting because the Bhagavad Gita says that patience is a feminine quality. And there are qualities in both of the genders that, of course, all of the everyone has ability to, to access or develop any of the qualities, but some qualities are more outstanding in the male gender and some are more outstanding in the female gender. The female gender generally has a greater degree of patience than the male gender. And that's pointed out in Gita in the 18th chapter as it describes the feminine qualities. But patience is uh, one of the six principles that are mentioned by Rupa Goswami in uh, Upadesh Amrita, which describes the six qualities that are important and necessary for advancement in bhakti or for favorable execution in bhakti. And patience is one of them. Um, Bhakti Vinoda Kaur gives a long explanation of the, the principles of patience. But one of the things he emphasizes is developing scriptural understanding. Because by developing scriptural understanding, we under, we get a we get a clear perspective on how the process works. <clears throat> and we can see. It is a gradual process. Um, it's not something that one can simply, you know, move forward when we say very rapidly. There are cases like that, but that's usually due to a person's previous birth or births. But generally, for most of us, it's a very uh, slow process. <laughs> or will we say gradual process, not necessarily slow, it's gradual. And uh, having a clear perspective on how the process works and knowing where one is and where one needs to go to by, and what one has to do to get there, it becomes more easier to apply the principles of patience that's one of the reasons. Another one, and this is very fundamental, association with devotees helps to bring about patience because in association of devotees, one can feel happy. And when one is feeling happy, one is not so much concerned about what they're getting or what they're not getting. They're more or less feeling the pleasure of bhakti by executing it with others. And we also know that uh, we are by nature social beings and we resonate in our good qualities in the association with others. So that quality of patience is strengthened and fortified in association with devotees, especially devotees who are like-minded. Like-minded, Rupa Goswami makes this point that that type of association is the most conducive for one's advancement, like-minded association. That is, we're talking about that on the peer level. Now on the level of those who are more advanced and we can accept whatever association the Lord provides for, for us from those who are in a more advanced stage because they can always, you can always gain from that. So probably I'll give you a little uh, analogy, not analogy, a little example where Prabhupada uses when he describes the quality of patience. He says, a woman gets married 
And she's now she has a hun husband and she's eager for a child. But it's understood that the child will come in due course of time, not immediately. Everything is there. The husband is there. Everything is there. So everything that is needed to bring about the, the fulfillment of her desire to have a child is supplied. But she has to wait because she knows it takes time. So we have everything. If we have the association of devotees and we have the process of bhakti, and it's just a matter of time before we will achieve um, what we say, the, the, shel the full shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. So patience is, is very important and necessary. Thank you very much. It was very interesting what you said, because I've never actually connected patients with uh, the association of uh, devotees, but uh, it really makes sense. Uh, mm. The other one, which you said that uh, uh, if we have knowledge, we understand uh, where we are on what level of bhakti. Uh, I was just wondering that there is always these ups and downs. And uh, when we go the down part, uh, how should we understand that? Or how can we notice if, uh, if it's, how to say, sort of a natural down because we cannot uh, keep the up level or, or if it's, uh, it's, it's dangerous and, <clears throat> and uh, really doesn't go back up again? Well, if we're going up and down, it means we're on the platform of an art to nivriti. That means we're struggling with some of the anarthas. And when we get to the platform of the next stage, which is nishta, we're fixed. We're fixed in our devotional service. We still may have material tendencies and we can still be, you know, subject to make mistakes and commit offenses. But at least at that point, we're fixed in our devotional practice. We're not going to... We're not going to give it up. We're not going to go anywhere else. We're going to stay. But the ups and downs on the Nishta platform are very small and slight. On the Anartha Nivriti platform, they can be quite big. Mm -hmm. And then in the next stage after Nishta is Ruchi. Ruchi means then there's a constant sweet taste that de develops in the life of the devotee. That's mm -hmm. mm. very interesting. So, uh, may uh, on, on the level of nishta, there may also be some slight ups and downs. What what kind of uh, ups and downs there may be on the level of nishta? Well, the we if we on the level of nishta, we attain that after seventy five percent of our anarthas are mm -hmm. finished. That means there's 25% that's still remaining. So then those 25% may cause, uh, may cause ups and downs. They will, yeah, they will. And usually some of them are offenses. So if we get too much into the area of offenses, especially if we get into Vaishnava offenses, then we can go really down even on the Nishta platform. Now, but if we have offenses against the holy name or offenses against the deity, then we can just continue to chant, follow the process, and gradually those reactions from those offenses will be nullified. Thank you very much. It's uh, it's clear now. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Oh, go ahead, Prabhu. Uh, thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Uh, thank you for the narration of the wonderful pastimes of the Mahaprakash Leela. 
I have a question about Advaita Acharya. Are the you mentioned that they had three sons who became devotees? Uh, like there is Nityanand Vamsha. Is there also an Advaita Vamsha? And if so, are they favorable to uh, Krishna consciousness and is gone as an institution? Or well, we don't hear anything of that title, but we know that there are followers of Advaita that still exist in Shantipur even today. What is their particular commitment to Advaita? We don't know, because some of them are family members and some of them are just followers of Advaita. So there are some bogus persons who claim to be followers of Advaita. Advaita happens to come from an area called Shantipur and Shantipur is famous as an area for hating Vaishnavas. <laughs> They say, sometimes they say, Shantipur is famous for two things. It has the best cloth, the finest cloth anywhere in the area, and it's famous for hating Vaishnavas. So, you know, that way the Charya, he lived there, he preached there. Today we still do, we do a festival coming up. It's always every year just before the Gaur Purnima festival, it's usually on the, on the appearance day of Madhavendra Puri, we do this festival, it's called, uh, I forgot, it's called Shantipur something we do. And we come from Mayapur with truckloads of prashadam and feed people. Since we've been doing that every year, we felt we usually feed from 60 to 80,000 people just in one day. And uh, since we've been doing that, our, the animosity or whatever is, was there is, seems to be lessening like that. But that area, there's a lot of Durga worshippers. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj, because I've been to Shantipu twice. Um, and... Uh... A very serene and place uh, with orchard groves and uh, mango trees. Yeah, there's a beautiful orchard. There's a grove right in that that borders the temple yes. where Advaita Charya was, and uh, we usually hold, that's where we hold our festival there. It's huge and big. Because I didn't knew uh, until you mentioned today, Maharaj, that there were also followers before and also today who would reject Chaitanya Mahaprabhu but just worship Advaita Acharya. So that is something very interesting. Oh, yeah, that's there to some degree. And it might not be very significant, but there's no organized group that I know of. It doesn't mean it. There isn't one, but I don't know of any organized group who claims to be followers of Advaita. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Adi. Very good. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. Glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to your holiness. My question is, as uh, Diptesh Prabhu spoke about Advaita, even I'm thinking about the sons of Advaita Charya, three of them were monists. Uh, is there a difference between monism and impersonalism, or they are the same? There's different types of impersonalism, that's it. Impersonal is just like the, there are so many schools of Vaishnavism. There's also schools of impersonalism, Mayavadiism. Not all of them follow the same principles. Not all of them have the same forms of worship. It's 
So there is there are there are variations of yeah of impersonalisms. Many. So when we say someone is a monist, does that mean they or they they, they accept a, a form of the Lord or and uh, or they do not and they consider only the Brahman effulgences to be the aim of uh, life? Well, they generally worship a form of the Lord, but it's not that that they consider that form the supreme. They consider the oneness or the monistic, uh, the kaivalya aspect of the Lord as being the topmost. But they accept the Lord's form, but they, they consider it inferior to, and they sometimes they say the Lord's form is simply a form that he takes on when he comes to perform his pastimes. So they say that the forms are also temporary. Or even worse, they say, sometimes they say it's a material form. There's so many brands of impersonalists, Mayavadis, Monas, uh, Sunyavadis, Nirvishesvadis. Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hari. Dear devotees, if you have any more questions, please feel free to ask Maharaj for clarification, any doubts, anything at all. Tomorrow, Aside from our regular program, we're doing a program at three o'clock UK time. And this one is organized by the devotees in Mayapur for the glorification of Lord Chaitanya. It's part of the upcoming, it's part of the Gorpurnima festival. And we'll be speaking more pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. That's it. I sent the link and all the information to Tushar and to Lavanya. So if they can make that, I think I also send it to the conference. But for more information, you could contact uh, either one of them. So that's tomorrow at three o'clock UK time. Okay, so things are a little tight today and I have to conclude right now at the hour at 12 at uh, 12 30. so thank you very much and we'll uh, see all the devotees tomorrow i think we're also speaking some pastimes with the charlotte group tomorrow at um, one uh, i'm sorry at 12 12 20 UK time it starts a little later tomorrow. All right, then there's another one at three o'clock. Okay, thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for this beautiful narration of how Mukunda received the Lord's mercy in spite of being a little uh, deviant at times. This is actually great mercy of Lord Chaitanya and also very instructive for us to be chased to the path of devotional service. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Glory to 